the econometrics is essentially art. I'm not, I'll call it an art. It's, it's an art form of taking data and being able to manipulate it and analyze it and apply it to specifically economic fields. But as we can see, and I think most businesses and industries nowadays, data and analytics has become more and more prevalent and it's becoming, if anything, a requirement of job descriptions and, and uh, of, of employers for their staff. And so it's being used and used uh, much more sort of the trickle down nature of not to, you know, from the research side, but in mainstream industry and business. As an econometrician, um, do you think, or are there any common mistakes or easy improvements that you see um, potentially with how uh, data analysis potentially, or even econometrics is used in business and industry and, and what kind of sort of quick solutions potentially if there are any, uh, are there to those problems? So if you ask me, um, I can easily think uh, one common mistake in practice, mm -hmm. and that is for the superior risk regression. Uh, if you want to um, give another name, it can be called as a fake regression. So okay. basically speaking, uh, superior risk regression refers to the situation that um, there is no underlying economic relationship between two variables. But if you run the regression, you find that the result shows a significant relationship. Right. So I can give you an example. If you collect the data of number of birds in US as one variable, then you collect number of cars in New Zealand as another variable. So you regress number of birds in the US on number of cars in the New Zealand, most likely you will find that the slope parameter is going to be highly significant. So the slope parameter measures the relationship between the two variables I mentioned. If you want to interpret the result, um, you will say, okay, so number of um, cars in New Zealand will lead to more number of births in the US, which is uh, ridiculous. And the reason for this type of superior risk regression is due to long stationarity in the data. Uh, I don't want to go too into the technical um, details, but uh, uh, many people are not aware of this problem and they simply put uh, variables into their regression and uh, they interpret whatever they see from the software, um, that's potentially very dangerous because it gives a wrong suggestion for, for the business. Um, right. So yeah, if, if, if you map this type of uh, examples in, in business practice, and the, that you, you, you can think many mistakes ha has, been, has been made. Right, um, so, yeah. so, so it's this kind uh, of idea uh, that uh, just because you have a correlation, it doesn't necessarily mean causality. That doesn't mean that just because you have a, a positive correlation necessarily, or even a negative correlation between two variables, that doesn't mean they're necessarily intrinsically linked. There could be other factors at work. Is that is is that what you're sort of referring to in this regard? It can be interpreted in this way, but the specific reason for superior risk regression is due to a long stationarity in the data. Um, it, it, it can be interpreted as the umbrella that you mentioned, correlation is not a causality.